guys. Welcome to another episode of Triple K or Kate's Quarantine Kitchen. It's not offensive, I promise. This is just people making food and having drinks. I like booze. I like food. I don't like racism or systemic injustice. So there's that. We put that out there. It's been put out. We've talked about it. It's cool. So what I have in front of me right now is basically a, you probably can't see it because it's like pale and just like blends into my counter, but it's literally a giant pile of mashed potatoes, basically. So I boiled some potatoes and then I peeled them and then I put them in my food processor just to basically make a really kind of sticky like potato substance over here. So the first thing we're gonna do with our sticky potato dough substance it's like it's, it's really sticky like it's meant to be like almost a glue type thing because we're gonna make pasta out of it oh my god I didn't tell you what we're making <gasps> I get really excited I'm sorry we're making gnocchi which is like it's pasta made out of potatoes basically little pasta chunks I've got potato all over my hands just from touching it just now but it's gonna get way worse so the first thing we're going to do is we are just going to dump the flour in this bowl that I have pre-measured in some salt on top of our pota mashed potato mixture. Get in there. And then, so we've got like a tiny little mound. So we're going to make a hole in the middle. We're going to make a little potato flour volcano because that's what we do. We may need more, so I think I, I, didn't, I put like slightly less flour than you're supposed to for the whole recipe because I want to make sure I don't add too much flour. If you add too much flour it becomes dense and cement like and you're not going to get the gnocchi effect that you would like. So we have that. We have this egg right here that I have procured as if out of nowhere and I'm going to crack it into the little hole in the middle of our little volcano or we're going to try it. So we've got the egg as the lava in our tiny little egg volcano, and we're going to beat it inside the hole. Like we're going to treat the hole inside our little egg flower volcano as if it's a bowl. Cool. We did that. It was fun. It was cool. We got like little like egg lava. We're going to try and incorporate. Oh shit, the lava is escaping. So we need to try and just incorporate everything together with our bare hands because this is a really old school classic technique, and I like to be really old school and classic about it. It's going to be awesome. And Charlie is really invested in this. She's around me snooping, trying to figure out what this whole like flower situation is. But little does she know, none of it's for her. We are probably going to need a little bit more flour than what I've put in here because it's really sticky. It's already like coating my hands into like a little potato glove. So we're going to try and incorporate as much flour as we can. And then we're going to incorporate some more. Like about a half a cup more. Like I said, like as always, my recipe is going to be in the comments. You'll know how to make it. I'll give you some pretty good instructions. You're always welcome to leave questions in the comment section if like something appears to be unclear or you don't know how to make, do one of the things I mentioned. If I use an outlandish cooking term that's just not familiar to you, you let me know and I'll hook you up, bro. I got links, I got videos, I know how to do it all. Okay, I don't know how to do it all, but I'll find out how to do it all for you. Like, we'll make it happen. We won't leave you hanging. So we're incorporating some more flour. We may need a little bit more because it's really soft. We still want the dough to be sticky. We still want it to be soft. We don't want it to take on like a bread texture. We may need a little bit extra because I didn't really necessarily follow my potato recipe through the tea. I think I made like five or six potatoes because we're out of chicken. It's a whole thing. I wish I could explain why being out of chicken is relevant, but it's like a whole thing and you don't need that in your life. So we're gonna add in some more flour. Ooh, here's some flour. So on the side, we're boiling some water because that's how we're gonna cook the gnocchi once we're finished. So we've got this big old pot over here, boiling some water. It's gonna be ready by the time we have rolled it out and made it 
ready, ready, I guess. We're gonna put some more flour on the counter. Okay, yeah, there it is. So we have a soft, really, really kind of sticky dough. We're gonna roll it out. We're gonna grab our friend, the wine bottle. Just kind of roll it out a little bit more. We still want it to be pretty thick. It's not like you're making like sugar cookies where you're gonna make shapes. We are gonna just roll it out so it just is just consistent. We want a thick, like almost, like I would say like a centimeter thick layer because we still want our gnocchi to be chunky. We don't want it to be flat. Okay, that looks good. So I'm gonna take my friend the knife over here, like I do, and I'm gonna make little rows of gnocchi. So I'm just gonna slice it and then call it good. And then we'll work from there. So I'm making rows in the dough, thickly cut. And then this is what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna take this little row and I'm gonna roll it out into a real row. So this was like a really tiny row, so we're gonna lay it down and we're gonna cut it into little gnocchi pieces. We might put a little more flour on this just to make it easier to roll out. Just like a little bit, you don't need a lot. Like I literally just dabbed my little flour ball into some, my little potato ball into some flour just to, so I can make some gnocchi pieces. And then we'll do it again. So we're gonna take the next row of gnocchi that we rolled out, put a little flour on the outside because we kind of learned from that last one that it needs just like a smidge so we can appropriately roll it out. Like Play-Doh, honest. It really is like the quintessential Play-Doh situation where we're gonna make little gnocchi pieces after we roll it out. We want them to be tiny little pillows of potato love, basically, is what I'm trying to tell you. It's gonna be amazing. Like, I did not grow up in a world where gnocchi existed. I didn't know that potatoes could be pasta. I didn't realize the possibilities in the world that existed where potatoes were pasta. Like, what a time to be alive, IRL. Like, is that not the dream? So this is, was a really exciting discovery for me. And it's probably one of my favorite slash best things that I make. Like we're talking like New Year's Eve or Christmas Eve with, with grandma type meal, you know? Like you wanna make something to impress people, you wanna make something really good, this is it. This is the one, this is how you do it. I'm gonna show you. So we've got quite a bit going on right now. So we're gonna start throwing them into the water because the water's hot enough. And we're gonna literally wait for them to float to the top of the water. I know like that's literally how you know they're done is that they float to the top. It's like the easy, like I think it's almost better than easier than making regular pasta. Because does regular pasta just float to the top when it's done? No, it doesn't. It doesn't tell you when it's done. You have to figure it out. But gnocchi, gnocchi knows when it's done. So we've got our first batch going and the next thing we're gonna start doing is making the sauce. So we're gonna take two tablespoons of pre-cut butter and I'm gonna throw it in this frying pan that I already have and I'm gonna turn it up and so it melts. Yep, that's the rear. And so while that's happening, we're gonna go back to making more gnocchi. So we've got better butter melting, we've got gnocchi cooking, it's like a whole thing. There's an ordeal occurring behind me and we're gonna see how well I can do all the things at once. It's probably not gonna go well, let's be real. So a couple things that we're gonna add to our gnocchi dish tonight. We are adding, we have bacon, we have spinach, we're doing it all. We were gonna do chicken, but our chicken was not thawed because we're always the height of preparedness. So we're just gonna do the a bacon heavy gnocchi basically. I meant to get out like a slotted spoon to do the rest of the gnocchi. So I'm gonna have to reach into our 
spoon drawer with my crazy gnocchi hands probably when the time comes. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's fine. I don't care. Well, I do care. It's gonna be dope, honestly. I'm not even worried. It's gonna be so good. I did make this on Christmas Day this year, or no, two years, oh my god. Time is not linear, you guys. Like, I thought it was bad before quarantine, but now it's just like 50 times worse, or I just don't even know what year it is. But I, like, made this, uh, I guess it was two years ago for Christmas Day for Billy's family, and I guess they went well, but I actually made too much. Cause I was just, you know, accustomed to making it for like two people, but you really only need like maybe four potatoes tops to do that. And I did a whole, like, I think pound and a half or something or five pounds. I don't know. I did a lot of potatoes. So it took much longer than this to make it for not like quite 20 people. So you need less than you think you do is what I'm trying to tell you. That was, that was the story the moral of the story. It went well, I think. I think I think I relayed the moral well enough. Like this is like an episode of Blue's Clues up in here. So this cheese sauce that I'm making, kind of low key on the side with the butter, is actually a sauce that Billy makes really well. So I'm going to freshly um, grind some pepper into the two tablespoons of butter I already have melting. Like a fair amount. Like we want this to be really peppery because it's kind of taking on like a pep de cacio. I'm not sure if I said that right at all, but it's like a, a buttery peppery sauce. I'm actually melting this first round of butter with or in with the pan that I made my bacon in. So there's a little bit of bacon grease in there. There's a little bit of melted butter. Now there's a bunch of pepper. And some of our gnocchi is rising and it's done. So we need to get that out of there. So I meant to have my slotted spoon ready, but then I did. That's a spatula. Oops, I found it. Ah. Nope, that's not it. You know what, this will do. spoon or fold spoon. So the thing we're going to put them into, we're just going to put them on the side in a bowl. I can see my little gnocchis floating away so I have to rescue them. Oh many of them are rising. It's very, it's happening very quickly. A lot of time it will happen like almost all at once and you have to rescue all your little gnocchis. I still love that they just float and they're like look I'm done. I'm floating. So I was telling you guys about Christmas of two years ago, and I was actually a little overwhelmed making, you know, trying to make a side dish for such a large amount of people, so my mom actually really helped me. Um, I was having trouble making the sauce that I made. It was a very similar kind of like, you know, Parmesan style, like thin, nice fettuccine alfredo style sauce, but I was struggling to make it consistent. I kept on uh, breaking the sauce and my mom was there. So this one's for you, mom, because she rescued my butt a lot on making my Christmas day gnocchi. She was a hero and she like was out there helping me with potatoes for like a billion hours. This, is a, this was a lot of potatoes. I went overboard, but it was so worth it. It came out so good. Between me and my mom, we came in clutch. We made a delightful Christmas Eve dinner that was not necessarily a standard Christmas Eve staple, but it was a delightful addition in my opinion. So that's what I have to say about that. In the meantime, we're gonna start adding some uh, more tablespoons of butter that is slowly burning. So we're gonna have kind of a brown sauce going. But we're gonna add one tablespoon of butter at a time. And we're gonna turn on the temperature because it is getting lava hot really fast. And then we're gonna add some of the milk. So we have a cup of dairy right here. You can use whipping cream. I've got whole milk today. So we're gonna add that and we're gonna whisk it. We're gonna whisk in the milk and the butter just to kind of make sure they just incorporate one another, become one. 
because I let my butter get a little brown, and we want those that pepper and that brown butter to become a plain. Already, it's because it's melting together. It looks beautiful. It looks nice. So now that we've got the milk in, we're gonna stir in one tablespoon of butter at a time. We've literally got like a whole stick of butter, and we just pre-sliced it so that we could just literally do this and stir in one tablespoon at a time. So it's gonna take a lot longer now that we put the milk in. So we're gonna go back to the gnocchi and start doing more of that. Just so we're ahead of the game and we're just ready. The other thing that I've done, besides having like the potato kind of ready to go, where it's like already pre-mashed and everything, was I also took my cheese that's going in the cheese sauce and I, like I already, like the cheese is already shredded, like I bought shredded cheese, but then I additionally put it through my food processor to really just kind of refine it down to more like a dust. So that it really like melts well into my sauce instead of saying kind of chunky almost we don't want that we want it to melt down and become like part of the sauce flavor profile the rather than being chunks of cheese so that was another thing i did in advance today my food processor did god's work we made mashed potatoes we made really tiny chunks of cheese like it was doing all the things We've incorporated all of the butter into our sauce. We're gonna take this a cup-ish of cheese that I've processed extra, and I'm gonna add that in there also. And I'm gonna try and whisk it in real quick because I don't want it to clump. I want it to melt right into that buttery, milky sauce. I want it to be smooth and just make the sauce, the, the cheese, the smooth cheese gnocchi sauce we've all always dreamed of, you know? I don't know if you have dreamed of that. That's what I dream of. And you know what? This cheese sauce isn't looking as thick as I want it to be, so I'm gonna throw in some more cheese. Even if it's not like that pre-shreddedness that I wanted. You know, like it's just, it's a matter of knowing your cheese-related sauce preferences. So I'm throwing in some Parmesan just to kind of give it a nice thickness. Nothing too much but I need to make sure I'm stirring it in so it really just becomes more of the liquid rather than the chunk, like the thick, melty chunks that are very possible. So already it's becoming much thicker. We're gonna let it cook down once I think the cheese is fully incorporated. Now that the gnocchis are cooked, we're gonna dump out most of the gnocchi cooking water, but not all of it. We're gonna leave about maybe a cup in the bottom you can definitely measure that just to make sure you're like on point. And we're gonna dump the sauce in there. And we're gonna let that cook down. For just like a little bit. So what this does is this really incorporates the flavor from the gnocchi. It's gonna really help melt in the cheese and give you a smoother sauce. Um, the, typically, if, if we were making pasta, we would incorporate the pasta water from cooking the pasta and do the very same thing. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this bag to spinach because spinach goes well with bacon and we can pretend that this is a healthy dish, but really we're just making pasta out of potatoes. Like it's, it's not a healthy dish. Let's be real here, guys. So we're going to put our spinach in there and make believe that it's like healthy. We're gonna stir. We're gonna put like most of the bag in there because spinach really does, you know, become smaller. I would say like almost all of the bag. So we're just gonna really kind of just stir that in. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we are actually going to cover it for a little bit. I'm going to stir it a little bit more because I can see there's more chunks of cheese than I would like. So we're just going to kind of really try to, oh, I just got, oh, I just got sauce all over my leg and it felt bad. It felt bad guys because I was stirring too vigorously, but it's cool. And we, that was a close one. We almost did it again. 
The next thing we're gonna do, oh, you know what? Honestly, we may not need to cover because the spinach is really wilting down nicely in a way that we would like, very quickly. So we have let the sauce simmer for a little bit and we are gonna add in the gnocchi. It's gotten a little thicker. It's gonna be, it's never gonna be like a full, like thick, you know, but uh, fettuccine like we expect it to be because it's, we're not trying to make like a roux. We're trying to make like more like a cheese sauce. So we're gonna put the gnocchis in now. It's ready. Okay. We're gonna take the whisk out because that's not gonna help us. We're gonna use one of our favorites, the wood spoon, to mix in the gnocchis into the sauce. starch and the gnocchi kind of incorporate into the sauce as well and help that thicken things up. We don't want to stir too much because we don't want to break up the gnocchi and we want to make sure like the spinach is becoming fully incorporated. All right guys, I think it's ready. I'm going to serve myself up a dollop. The sauce came out a little thinner than I'm accustomed to because I used whole milk instead of whipping cream, which whipping cream was much better from literally the this experience that I've had. So I, am, I didn't put the bacon in to the gnocchi. I'm going to top it with the, I'm going to top my bowl with bacon. Charlie loves bacon and therefore is underfoot. So we're going to put some bacon in there. We're gonna put some shredded Parmesan on there. To garnish, and I'm gonna just show you. We're gonna come around. We're gonna do this a little different. I'm trying to figure out the best ways to do like the close-up eating shot. So behold, here are my gnocchis. Look at them, they're beautiful. It's very saucy. I just like cereal bowls basically for all food. I wish that was a joke, but I love them. And this is my favorite bowl. It's got little birds on it. So behold, first bite, we got some bacon, we got some spinach, we got a little gnocchi. And that's what's up. The gnocchi is really light. It's still got like a little stickiness to it. It's delightful, so good. Mm. Mm. Oh my god. So yummy. I'm telling you, like this cheese sauce is one of my favorite. Like me and Billy have been working like to find the ultimate cheese sauce. And he found it. And he made it. Which is made with whipping cream and that whole milk like I made today. But it's still like even without the heavy whipping cream. This is freaking delightful and y'all should try it. So, things are changing around here in this world. Be cautious, be safe. Don't, don't hit the bars and the casinos and like don't go to overpopulated places. You shouldn't be in large groups. You shouldn't be in largely populated areas. So, Maybe by the time this video releases, that will not be the case. And you can be in a party of 50. Like, I don't know, man. But for now, like, just don't overdo it for yourself. Take it easy. I know it's really exciting, but like, don't let those feelings overwhelm the senses that guide you to make good choices. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Don't sneeze on people. That's all I've got for that. Don't expose people you care about to all this nonsense if you are exposing yourself. But quarantine within reasonability. Stay safe within reasonability. Like and subscribe. There's no reasonability. Just like and subscribe. That's that's it. And maybe make some gnocchi because it's time consuming and it prevents you from being your people. Done. Figured it out. Save the world. Make gnocchi. Thank you guys.